So let's jump into what we mean by extreme weather. So let's go through to start with what we mean by weather and climate, just another reminder. Okay, so weather describes the day-to-day -day conditions, whilst climate deals with the average weather over a long period of time. And that is usually data at least over a 30 year period. So extreme weather is classified as unexpected or unusual. It could also be severe or unseasonable weather. Extreme weather is also hazardous when it leads to damage or threatens injury or possible death. So well, when we're classifying extreme weather in the UK, we can divide it into a few different cat categories. So we've got strong winds and thunderstorms, prolonged rainfall and flooding, extreme heat and drought, and then extreme cold and heavy snow. So it's really important you just know the differences there between uh, the different types of extreme weather that we experience in the UK. For this unit, you're gonna to need to know a case study. So you might have looked at a few different things, but I'm just gonna talk about the Somerset floods from 2014. The main cause of the floods was heavy rainfall. And again, this was the biggest contributing factor with December the 2013 being one of the stormiest Decembers on record. Now water was swept up the rivers from Bristol Channel by storm surges and the high tide, while also the lack of river dredging over the last 20 years was also identified as another cause. So when we're looking at the impacts or the effects of flooding, we can break it down into social, economic, and environmental effects. So just to run through a few of them, um, the social effects affect stuff like houses and agricultural land being damaged, um, or power supplies being cut off. When it comes to the local economy, um, we're talking about the cost of damage. So in this case, it was estimated to be more than 10 million pounds worth of damage. And then finally, when we look at the environmental effects, we've got stuff like pollution to the area, flood debris, and stagnant water. So after looking at all the effects for this case study of the Somerset floods, you want to talk about the responses. So some of the responses, just going through it, was the local community providing a lot of assistance and support to the area. Uh, they got extra police patrols out um, and they also deployed the Royal Marines. Um, then they got 13 water pumps out to divert some of the water back into the nearby river channels. Now the main long-term response was a 20 million pound flood action plan, which saw the Somerset County Council work together with the Environment Agency. And this included several different elements. So we've got dredging uh, of the local rivers, we've got raising uh, river banks, we've got raising local roads, uh, installing specific flood defences, and also considering a new tidal barrier at Bridgewater. Now, when we're talking about UK extreme weather, you have to have some good examples of different ways of protecting against these uh, types of extreme weather. So starting off with flooding, we've got lots of flood protection schemes. Now, I took a look at the Banbury Flood Alleviation Scheme. Uh, the link will be above, so go check that out if you're studying the Rivers Unit. Um, and you'll see all the different elements that they've put in place to try and reduce the risk of flooding. Now we've also got Somerset floods and the Cumbria floods creating their own long-term schemes to reduce the risk of flooding, incorporating some of the same elements like water pumps, raising roads and river banks. In times of drought, we often see water use being restricted. So we've had stuff like hose pipe bands in the past. And also a lot of the water companies are aiming to reduce our consumption in general anyway. They're doing this by trying to install water meters and get people to be conscious about how much water they're actually using. Lastly, we've got cold weather and a lot of the responsibility is left to the local councils. So they are responsible for gritting local roads, getting warnings out, depending on the situation in the local community. Um, they're also good at getting media out and using social media to warn people of the risks. So getting uh, information about non-essential travel is also a good one um, and reporting traffic accidents and some of the risk of exposure to cold. So that's just a quick run through of what we mean by extreme weather in the UK. I'm hoping to do some more videos in this series looking at extreme weather in the UK and hopefully visiting Somerset and Cumbria in the future. 
Again, thanks for watching. Give this video a like. Make sure you subscribe for more videos in this Sunday morning coffee series.